Phineas, we met in high school our 1841 senior year. It was love at first sight. He was wearing a very nice pair of slacks that day. That Phineas, he was the hardest working man out on this railroad. He was a good man. And, until his accident. Then he wasn't a good man. And became drunk all the time. All he did was drink. And yell. And scream. Gage had a wonderful personality. He was courteous to me, always helped around the house. He was not a mean person. I like Phineas. He's my brother. We were friends before the accident. Then after that, I don't like him. His work on the railroad always scared me. I told him once, I told him, Phineas, don't go blow off your head. Man, I told him, I told him, I told him. Now I think about that was the day he got his head blown off. I told him he not blow his head off. It's not good. That day was like any other day. Phineas was packing down the explosives into the rock with his tampering iron when suddenly the explosives ignited and the tampering iron shot through his head. It was not good. We had to carry him in an ox cart all the way into town. There was blood everywhere. I was scared. I and was sad. scared too. I cried for three days. I didn't cry. He was a good man before that. After, I don't know what happened to him. I'm Dr. Harlow and I conducted the 1848 tests on the subject when he escaped. I arrived nearly two hours after the accident. I didn't find out about the accident until about an hour after it happened. I ran as fast as I could down to the hospital. I didn't leave too Gage recognized me at once, and he told me that he hoped he was not much hurt. We then fixed the wounds with appropriate bandages. Mr. Gage's co-workers and Gage himself testified that the iron struck his head and passed through. Paul Phineas didn't look good at all. I seen him there all wrapped up and whatnot. I thought I was going to lose him that day. I had the coffin prepared that day, but it was a sad, sad day. <laughs> that car, what a waste of money that was. Not good. Gage's possession of reason was still intact and seemed completely normal and healed up compared to the average person. However, there was quite a change in Mr. Gage, Mr. Gage's personality. That darn boy lived. Almost wish he would have passed away that day if I had known what he would have become. After the accident, I didn't like him at all. He was mean to me, kicked me, yelled at me. He didn't know what he was doing. He never had appropriate behavior around me. I don't know what appropriate means, but it's not good. That boy turned into a monster after that accident. He was always crabby, mean, never helped around the house none. He did nothing, just kept yelling at me all the time, man. I screaming at me to make him food. I don't know why I stuck around how long I did. I just want, I just want my Phineas back. The rod entered Gage's face right below the left cheekbone and continued up towards the median of the skull, passed all the way through, exiting out the frontal cortex. The result being some loss of brain tissue, almost blinding damage to the left eye, and damage to the frontal cortex. The day after the incident, Gage was not the same person. He was very irritable and a drunkard. He was very mean to me. He did not speak very kind words. He made fun of my hair, and my teeth, and my accent. He had an accent too, why'd he make fun of us? Oh, oh, oh. Seriously. I didn't like him after that. He was angry all the time and screaming and yelling. He became a very bad man. Not good. I did not like him. I did not like Phineas. 
Now, many years later, he's apparently famous or something. But I don't see why all he did was do something wrong and turn angry and mean and hurt me. Didn't like him. I was opposed to by others for my 1848 report. They thought it was just an accident and it had no importance. But now, it's one of the most famous brain injuries cases ever! It helped future neurologists locate regions of the brain that is in the change of personality. 